So this is the Dancing Beyond Borders Festival, and we thank our supporters, which is the Tennessee Council on Developmental Disabilities, and also a grant from the Nashville Predators Foundation. So we have Meg Brooker with us from Middle Tennessee State University. We're thrilled to have her with us today, and I'm going to turn it over to Meg. So Meg, it is all you. Great, thank you so much, Lori. Um, so I just uh, also wanna begin by acknowledging that um, uh, I think most of us are here in Tennessee, but I'm actually in Chattanooga, Tennessee today, which is also um, the land of the Cherokee Nation. And I am um, in a, um, uh, what was formerly my living room, but all the furniture has been moved out because I've been teaching dance classes. So it's an open space with yellow walls and a wooden floor. And I am um, a white female with red hair. And I have a, a kind of fun pink scarf on today that is a, um, it's actually a recent gift from my mom. <laughs> so she did well with the scarf. Uh, and then I, oh good, and I see uh, uh, Tori is coming in too, and Vivian is here. It's great to see you guys. So uh, my uh, name is Meg uh, Brooker. I am uh, the director of the dance program at Middle Tennessee State University. And I'm going to uh, talk with you guys today about uh, your future in dance. What, what do you want to do in dance? And so I thought that we would, and I have resources to share and we can go in some different directions, but I thought it might be fun uh, just to start by having everyone, um, you know, share if you, like, what do you like about dance? Why do you dance? Does anybody feel willing to answer that question? Um, I'll share mine just to start. I dance because it makes me feel happy. And, and I love dancing um, because I like to live in music. I think that, that entering, um, entering the world of music um, is so much fun. I feel like music makes my body move in all different kinds of ways. And it's such a nice way to connect with other people. It makes me feel joyful. So what, why do you guys like to dance? I see Erica's nodding. Erica, do you have, do you have a thought that comes to mind? Um, well, I like to dance because it helps me feel like I'm spreading joy through the art of dance. And it helps personally for me, it helps cope. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoy getting to move my body to the music. That's beautiful. And I love that space, both of it's joyful and it also, it can, it can help us cope. It can be very healing. Mm -hmm. um, it can, it can help us realize that, um, that, you know, even if we feel sad or there's grief or something that's happening in our lives that, that we're struggling with, that there's a way to, um, to release or transform that emotion, or even just to connect with other people and to know that that's part of our humanity. So that's very beautiful. Um, does anybody, is anybody else willing to share? Adam or Tori or Vivian and Hope, I see you're here too. We're just talking about why we like to dance. All right. Go ahead, Adam, if you have something. Okay, um, I like to dance because it makes me feel happy and, and it makes me passionate what I do with the part of dancing through my heart. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that too. Does anybody else have anything that they're willing to share? You don't have to share. I can share. I, go oh, oh, go ahead. No, you, you. Okay. Um, I like to dance because I like to share it with other people. I know I've met some of you, Adam, I know I've definitely met you before when I taught my physics of dance three years ago. Um, so that's how I know some of you all from before, but that's why I love to do it is to share it and to connect with people. Hmm. Nice. And whoever wants to go next can just unmute and share their thoughts too. I think it's an expression of our soul and we need that creativity in our life. And I started, I'm in my uh, early fifties and 
grown children and married. And I started dance class when I was three years old. And living in the Northeast, I wanted to be a rockette. My dance teacher actually was a rockette. I wanted to dance on Radio City Music Hall. And um, I actually studied under Ann Holland at MTSU uh, 30 something years ago. <laughs> Um, I know I live in Atlanta now, and that's why I'm linked in on this. My mother is friends with um, Jennifer's mother mm -hmm. and um, sent me the link. And this is, I just, uh, it's so much a part of your life when you're missing. And I had all boys, so I did have my youngest son, I mean, my oldest son, um, in with a dance class doing the Nutcracker 25 years ago. And it was just something I haven't been in a dance studio in 20 years. And it's a part of you that never goes away. And it's a joy um, mm -hmm. to express yourself with the music and, mm -hmm. and just to get back in touch with that. And I think if so many people need that creativity in their life and mm -hmm. it's, it's something you can't get from anything else. Mm -hmm. That was fantastic too. And it, and it, it, I think that there's that, um, that sense of dancing for your whole life. That's another thing that um, Lori and I were actually talking about that when I, I was meeting with her just to sort of see, you know, what her thoughts were about this session. I think that's also really important. Um, I'm in my 40s and I'm still, you know, clearly I'm still teaching and dancing, but I'm still performing and I don't ever plan on retiring. <laughs> I think it's important um, that we see uh, people um, dancing at all different stages of our lives. Um, sometimes our culture, I think, thinks of dance in a very narrow way in terms of thinking about, you know, who dancers are. And I firmly believe that we're all, we're, we're all moving, we're all feeling, we're all expressing we're all dancing every day. And so I think that's really exciting to hear you share that too, about having such a full life as a dancer. Um, and I see Hope, uh, it's great to see you. I know you just, you were there and I know you're, you may be in earshot. Um, Hope or Tori, do you have anything to share about why you dance? Why do you like to dance? I don't know. You don't have to know. That's a perfectly valid answer. <laughs> I always like expressing in myself through dance. It's a great way to express feelings. Mm -hmm. Yep, expression. It gets it out. Um, I'm wondering, just if, um, just for fun, I know you guys have been dancing all day. I've danced a little bit today, but I don't think I've danced as much as you all have. Three, there are three words that um, just kind of stood out to me from what we all shared. One was joy. Um, another one is, is what Tori just reiterated too, which is to express. And then I really also um, uh, love what, what Erica had mentioned about to cope. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe we could uh, just really quickly maybe do like three gestures all together to have a little dance that is joy and, um, and coping and then maybe expressing. Can we, can we try that together? If I count to three, I'll just say three, two, one. Can we do a movement that feels joyful? Here we go, ready? Three, two, one. Joyful, whatever feels joyful to you. And good, and then we'll rest on that. And then we'll do something related to coping. How do, how do, we, how do we manage? How do we cope? How do we you know, sort of um, process our feelings that, that, might, that might cause struggle? So let's play with that one. In three, two, one, cope. Oh, this is great. What about express? Can we try that one? Let's do three, two, one, express. Oh, this is great. Um, let's pause on that and let's just do it really as a phrase. So let's let's link them, right? We have three movements now. We can make a dance with three movements. So if we have joy, cope, and express, um, let's do our phrase. Are we ready? So we'll start in three, two, one. 
So we have joy. And you can do your own movements. You can do my movements too, or anybody else's movements. Coke. And express. Fantastic. So thank you for doing that with me. I always love, even if this is not a dance, you know, technique class. We're just, we're having more of a conversation about um, how you can continue dancing and and move your relationship with dance um, forward in your life. But it's it's always nice to start off moving together. Um, so I'm curious if we could just do one more sharing, and then I do have some resources and some things I can screen share with you. What, how are you, how are you dancing now? I know, I know some of, some of you are dancing with Borderless Arts or there are other organizations that you're dancing with. Um, who's, who's dancing with Borderless Arts and, and working with Jennifer right now? Yeah, good. E excellent. And Vivian, I'm, where are you located? How are you dancing these days? I am dancing at Ohio State. My, my major is dance. Oh my goodness, that's so cool. Um, do you, so I, have you worked with Hannah Kostrin at all? Not yet, not yet. Okay. I think I should have her either next semester or in the spring. Oh, that's fantastic. She's a colleague of mine. Awesome. Um, yes, I, I have had several friends who have, are Ohio State alums and you know, also dancing there. And I, I was there just a couple of years ago, there was a Dance Studies Association conference um, at Columbus. So that's so great that you're joining us from there. Um, yeah. And how did you find out about the festival? I'm still on the email list from from when I taught um, my curriculum in 2018. So I've been keeping up. Oh, that's so cool. Well, it's really wonderful to connect with you. And it's great to know that, that you're participating this weekend as well. Thank you. Um, so I'm just curious from, from those of you who are, um, who are dancing and folks who are dancing with Borderless Arts, um, how, do you, how do you, and what are your goals in dance? Are you wanting to continue performing? Do you, are you interested in creating dance? Are you interested in facilitating workshops? Um, what do you, this session is, is designed to be, you know, what your future in dance is. You have a present in dance. So you're, you're dancing currently in the present. What do you want to be doing as a dancer? Erica, why don't you share the idea you had about a year ago of what you wanted to do? Meta? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I would I would really have enjoyed working with younger um, people with disabilities. And I've given it the name of Meta, which is moving emotions through art. Mm. And I really wanted to focus on things like in theater where they can express themselves and dance. And um, I don't know, I just thought it'd be uh, an extremely fun thing to do. That sounds fantastic. Um, how do you envision moving that forward? What would your first step be? I gotta get it's on my own two feet. <laughs> I think it's a beautiful concept. Um, so that would be, I, you know, I think that it sounds like that's something that, that you could develop through Borderless Arts um, as an organization. Have you talked to Jennifer about that idea? Um, I actually don't think I have. That might be a great place to start because it seems like maybe there's a way that if you're wanting to move into a facilitation role that you could um, work with her to develop a workshop uh, geared towards younger people too. And that also, I, I do have a resource to share that, that may be related to that, but I wanna see if anybody else has anything that they're willing to share about what their goals are. Um, but that's a beautiful, I love the meta acronym. I think that's a fantastic acronym too. Thank you. Yeah, you should, you should move forward with that. 
<laughs> Absolutely. And I and and we should, you know, Lori, that's something if if we want to, you know, touch base and see if we have any um if there's any way, you know, from the university side of things that we could support developing that idea, we may have students um, who might be interested as well. So yeah, I think I that's really, really great. I've really wanted her to do that. She talked about it at one point and then we kind of let it slip away a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I would like to see her, I would like to see her at least do a program or two because she's got the, the ability to do do so. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Does anybody else? It doesn't have to be that fully, fully formed. Erica's got a really great, very specific idea um, as a goal that she wants to work towards. Um, so I know many of you are performing. Have any of you thought about, are, are you choreographing? Are you making your own dances? Are you teaching anybody else your dances? I think, that yeah. be, I think that would be really fun if I could remember it myself. Yeah. Well, that's why improvisation is so cool. <laughs> I love improv. I love Me improv. Because <laughs> then you don't have to remember it. You just get to, you know, you're, you, you're, you get to move the way that you feel or, you know, in relationship to other people. I like improv too. Um, does anybody else have anything like that to 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 share? Anything that you're thinking, Adam or Tori? Do you, are there are there things that you want to do in dance that you're not quite doing yet? Mm. Yes. Hope, or is there something that you want to do that you're not doing yet? Nope. Well, that's good because it means you're doing it. That's great. Well, I, um, so several of you uh, got to work in the fall. Um, not everybody here, so I'll give some context for this. So my, um, I was uh, based in Austin, Texas before I came to MTSU. And I um, got to work uh, with a company in Austin called Body Shift that was um, one of the projects of a larger company called Forklift Dance Works. And Body Shift um, was uh, Silva Lacunen, who um, who came and worked with some of you in the fall, um, was one of the the early uh, facilitators of Body Shift, and she's really grown that project. And so Body Shift was um, focused on creating workshops and also a performing company um, that was um, that was uh, inclusive dance. And so we did a lot of workshops in the beginning of that process. Um, and there's a really active uh, dance community in Austin um, of um, people who are coming from approaching movement from a lot of different perspectives. And uh, one of the ways that people approach movement is through improvisation and also through a kind of dance form called contact improvisation. And contact improvisation um, really uh, focuses on partnering between people. So you're, you're dancing with another person and you're able to share weight, you're able to, um, to feel and to sense into the other person. And so there's a, a sense of relationship and community um, that comes out of that kind of work. And so um, some of the work that we did with Silva was related to that. We did a lot of work that had to do with making shapes in space. Um, maybe we're doing some of the exercises where, um, where it's kind of like someone's a sculptor and someone's the clay. So you get to, to have, um, you get to shape someone else's body into so an expressive form or someone else is working with you. And um, and these are really wonderful ways to to both dance, but also, you know, to get to know what other people's experiences are um, of um, of just being present um, and and being human. And so some of that work also developed into performance and into performances that would happen in different kinds of spaces. So um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with the idea of site-specific work. 
Um, yeah, and I'm seeing Vivian's nodding. So, so site specific work would be dance work that tends to happen in spaces that aren't necessarily traditional theater spaces. And that might be, maybe it's like outside on the street, on the sidewalk. Um, one of the body shift performances that was uh, that was really fun had to do with crossing the street. So you've got a large group of people who are, you know, finding ways to um, to cross the street together and in interesting moving patterns. And one of the cool things about site specific work is that it, people will stop to notice. So. So one of the um, wonderful things that can happen, especially in a very inclusive dance context, is that we can create more visibility for lots of different people dancing and moving together because we're putting our dance performance, we're putting our bodies, we're putting our movement out into a public space. And so I think, um, does anybody have any questions about anything or is there anything you wanted to ask me? Because I can move into screen sharing some stuff that I wanted to, um, to give you all as resources. And then I'll also say, I'm not an expert on, um, on um, I'm, at this point in my life, I'm like, I'm not an expert on anything. <laughs> I have had a lot of experiences. Um, and I, you know, am very happy to share the things that, that I'm familiar with, but I'm also still learning. Um, and so I'm going to just start. So I'm going to start by sharing the things that I am aware of and that I do know. So let me go ahead and pull up my screen here. Um, and I'm going to hold on just one moment. Let me find this frame. So I wanted to share um, a couple of resources that are on um, the Body Shift website. And so Body Shift was the name of this um, inclusive dance company in Austin, Texas. And it's now become its own organization. And so and so Silva is now working with an organization that's called Art Spark. Um, so this is the gallery page of, um, of Body Shift. And there are several different videos and I wanted to share um, this first one was an installation piece that happened in the Blanton Museum of Art, which is an art museum that's affiliated with um, the University of Texas at Austin. Oops. On display, that's this is the one. So um, so I'm just going to play this one, and then if you have questions or thoughts, I'd love to hear them after. Oops. I'm pausing because I'm realizing I don't think I clicked to share the sound. My apologies. All right. So there will be sound with this one. Hold on just one moment. I should be a, more of an expert with scre screen sharing at this point. Okay, here we are. And can somebody give me a thumbs up? You, can you see my screen? Okay, great. And then if you don't hear the music, let me know.
So, so that's just that first video. What are your thoughts or impressions on seeing that? I want to go back to site specific work. I love that. It's so unexpected and exciting. Yeah, I feel inspired. Mm, me too. Adam, were you going to say something? I saw, I saw your hand wave. Um, I would say it's kind of, um, it's pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Erica, I see your hand. You get, you guys don't have to, you know, you can, you can interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just thinking about how it seemed to make a connectedness. Mm -hmm. I can't even yeah. explain why it feels like that. But it seems like they're trapped in a time mm. where movement may never stop that's really interesting because they were in a lot of shapes that almost seemed like they like like time had frozen yeah um and that's just funny because i have been watching some television shows where there was you know like a someone who had a power where they could freeze time <laughs> and so it's kind of you know it's like like oh time froze and you're and you're in that shape and they because they were holding still right so it's oh, i mean that's another thing of stillness is stillness is dancing too yeah posture does speak a lot mm -hmm. absolutely and then to see you know everybody in that they're all dressed in the same color but they're they're some of them are in um you know, on the floor, or I'm particularly struck by the the um, the dancer who is on laying on the staircase. You know, they're they're occupying that space in in different ways. Mm -hmm. Let's look at a couple more, um, and and then I'm you know part of part of my offering this um, was you know, from the perspective that if you're interested in some of these ideas, these are performance ideas that, you know, artists borrow from each other all the time. Um, if anybody's, and if you guys are interested in site specific performance, um, then, you know, that's something maybe we can create some of this kind of work. Um, if you like that installation piece, and that was in an art museum. So they were, they were doing it kind of, you know, they, they were sort of like frozen statues. Um, but that kind of performance work is something um, that certainly, you know, we can facilitate and may give us some ideas for something to create. Maybe that's what, you know, the next step in our future in dances is, is to make a piece and to do something site specific. And then Vivian's going to have to come back to Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll have to take everybody to Ohio. So um, I'm going to share. Uh, okay, so I'm pulling up the next one. Um, so here we go. So this is um, this is a video that is um, uh, the same company that we just saw, and um, and I think this was for. Um, this might have been on the news. I think that's what this one is. I'm just going to start this from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah, this was a something that played on television in, in Austin. Improv is just tapping into your humanity. There's no how do you do it, I don't think. There's, there's no prescription. It just starts with you. And the more you tap into you, the more the rest of the stuff just happens. It 
Do you recognize Silva in the yellow shirt? Body shift is a place for anybody to come and enjoy dance as an art form. It's a measure of like how high your leg goes or how many periods you can make. Like, there is no measure. If it is what you want to do and you feel good about it, then that's all that it is. That's all the value for all of us that really needs to be. That's the art of it. It's a huge skill to be to tone into your own body and create a movement, yet at the same time to be completely aware of what's happening around you with the people that you're dancing and being able to then choose things that will um, benefit the whole design of the dance from all the movements that go around. And it just creates this intimacy almost with someone, even if they're across the room. that it's almost like it's made like it's almost like everybody knew what's gonna happen and yet it just happened and it might never happen again so I love those little diamonds that just comes when people are aware of their surroundings and choose the right thing to echo or right or wrong choose the, the same thing maybe to echo
it almost makes me now think of like the echoes of the, the past that we have had together as now almost coming here into this performance workshop. Like all the times that we have danced together and those echoes and those experiences. Not only echo, but like we, we have cast it a long time ago and now it's coming back, so that kind of a feeling. <laughs> Go ahead and pause that one. So I'm, do you have thoughts or impressions from, from that piece? That was inspiring. Very inspiring. Mm -hmm. what, is, what inspires you about it? Hope, did you have something to say? Or Tori, did you have something to say? The relationship, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say it's emotional, um, not so much as even physical, which is taking it out of that context really makes a big deal that you're feeling the music. And like you said, it, whether it be just moving your head or your finger, but it's any part of your body that you're able to connect with that music and and just finding that that inside of yourself. And that mm -hmm. is like they all said it, it's inspiring. Absolutely. There's something really powerful about communicating with movement and not words, isn't there? Were you going to share something else, Erica? Um, I don't think so. I just I I see that in in this particular piece. I think that that when we um when we breathe together, when we're able to make eye contact, and certainly when we're able to dance together, to partner together, right? There's something really nice about and very um, important about being able to be in physical contact with other people. And I, I know that's one of the things that we've all missed so much this year since we've been in this pandemic um, situation is, is not you know, having as much um, contact with other people. And I think that, that um, the space of contact improvisation as a dance form that um, that can really lend itself towards creating the kind of movement work that we just saw is really powerful. Um, and, you know, I would, you know, just thinking about like all of our futures in dance and um, the future of, of, you know, what can happen um, even, sorry, you guys, my, I have two cats in there. <laughs> <laughs> My cat was like, oh, you said physical contact. And I don't know if you saw her tail flicking around. But, um, but I think that that, you know, I would, I would love, you know, for us at the university to be able to off open up a space to do some of this kind of exploration if, if anyone is interested. And, you know, and certainly, you know, another, you know, studying dance formally in the university setting is one way that you can go. Um, oh, pretty kitty. Yeah, isn't she pretty? She's she's a tortoise. And then oh. I have another one. He just went over that way. He's a black and white kind of cow looking kitty. Oh. Um, yeah. So, and that's, you know, we there's, anyway, I start talking about cats. I'll go, <laughs> hope we'll have to talk about cats later if you have any pets or love animals. I have a cockapoo. Oh, you do. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. This is, you know, that's a whole, that's a whole other, whole other thing too that we could talk about related to dancing. Um, but we do have, we've got about maybe a little less than twenty minutes left. I wanted to also share. So, um, you know, if anybody has questions about the dance program at MTSU, I'm happy to answer. I'm happy to answer them. Um, and, you know, certainly a university dance study is one area that you can go into.
There are also um, some really interesting certification programs and workshops. If you're wanting to do more facilitation or, you know, even co-teaching with other people, it's really nice um, when you're in a creative process too, when there's more than one voice in the room, when we're, when you're in, you know, when you have maybe, you know, at least two people or more people who are leading and, and I've used this word facilitation a lot. I don't know um, how familiar that is. I think sometimes when we're thinking about being in a dance setting, you think about, you know, somebody's the teacher and then the other people are the students. But when we're working together artistically, we're collaborating, there can be an idea that the person who is, um, you know, maybe in that sort of more leadership role, what they're really doing is facilitating because everybody who's in the room has their own um, expression, their own gesture, their own um, movement to contribute to a process. And the facilitator, is is more guiding than than you know being in the in a um you know than a like a, a dictating kind of role um so i did want to share with you so um what i've done one workshop only with um uh a, a teacher uh named alito alessi and he has a program called danceability and so i'm gonna pull uh his information up here and and this is um so danceability is so i think am i on the home page hold on just a moment okay so this is this is the home page of his website his organization is called danceability international and he he has workshops and they also have teacher training programs um, and certify people to lead inclusive dance uh, workshops. And uh, the body shift videos from um, most of their uh, facilitators ha are certified in, in this particular method called danceability by Alito Alessi. And, um, and he's a very fantastic um, a, a teacher and mentor. Um, and this is just a slideshow that has a couple of images from some of the work that he's done. Um, and he's, he's traveled and worked all over the world. Um, and so I did want to also share a little bit, and I thought that that's a really cool, um, you know, there's a way that even working, you know, with set pieces and architecture, this is, that's going more into the traditional performance space and out of the site specific world that we were talking about. Um, but uh, certainly there's a, a lot of po creative possibility there. So um, I'm going to scroll back up here and, um, and just share with you. Um, so there's a resources page here um, that does have um, uh, some um, videos of his work. Um, there's also a, a page, a link that is for resources for children with disabilities. There's a teacher's guide. So there's some information about his programming here. If you look under programs, um, uh, there are um, there's information about danceability workshops, and there's also information about this teacher certification program. Um, and so the teacher certification that might be one direction that you may be interested in going as a dancer. Um, it's uh, designed for people who want to teach integrated groups and in movement arts or learn a model for facilitating communities that foster inclusive participation um, and their opportunities to grow with the danceability method um, through uh, the master teacher certifications and, um, and the career track mentoring. And this is something that um, his, you know, Eric, I don't know if you're writing this down, danceability.com is his website, great. 
Um, and that's, you know, and if you, for some reason, you know, have a question about it later, you're welcome to reach out to me. Um, and I can share this with information with Lori too. But, um, but I, and I've shared this with Jennifer as well. I think it would be really exciting um, if we had some people uh, in Tennessee who were, um, who were, you know, trained in his particular approach, because I think it's, um, it's a really great, um, it's a really great method and it would be fun to have more of this work happening where we are. Um, and then there's also information here about, um, about uh, choreography and presentation um, and about youth outreach. And Erica, this actually might, you know, if you, as you're thinking about um, what you're wanting to create with your meta idea, um, looking into, you know, even how he does youth outreach um, or even certification, you may, you know, that might be something that, that could be a very interesting thing for you to look into. Um, and then there's a calendar of events and workshops too. Um, and that's, um, and I am not sure, I'll just, I didn't, I should have looked at this beforehand, if he's doing, um, uh, if they, if they, they may have some virtual workshops, that's the other piece about this whole Zoom world that, um, that is really interesting. Um, now these are some danceability uh, courses that are happening internationally. It looks like some of those may be in person. Um, but, um, but we, I'm happy to, um, to continue to be in touch with anybody who might be interested in more information about his work. Um, and then I wanted to just see, I'm going to just click on their video link on this video link page. Um, and so this is, um, there are two different performances. Actually, so this is this is a piece. Um, I, let's just because we're we were in the vein of site specific, and so let's see one piece that is outdoors and site specific, and then let's see one piece that was in a theatrical setting. So we'll just watch a, a bit of this piece after the this ad. This is the checkers game where <laughs> grandson and granddad will bond. Okay, here we go. So we won't watch all 10 minutes of this, but we'll just watch a portion. And are you hearing the music?
I'm just going to go ahead and pause that one just because there are two more things I wanted to make sure that I do get to share as well. Um, so, um, Actually, I'm I so I've I've shared the uh, uh, danceability website with you, so you can go back and look at any of those videos that that you might want to see. Um, there is one more um, uh, company that I wanted to share some work from, and so one of the um, very well known uh, uh, mixed abilities uh, companies. Um, that is based in the UK. It's called Canduco, and I had had asked Lori earlier um, also about this company. There are some really um, well-known dance films that um, that were made by uh, by Canduco, and I've had the opportunity to see them live in performance before. And um, this particular video is available through the MTSU library. I don't know if you can find it online, and I just wanted to share. Um, this is a, a longer performance piece, but I just wanted to share a bit of this because, um, oh, hold on just a moment. Let me go ahead and make sure I get my screen share going and then we'll save a couple of minutes for questions as well. So I've got sound and right. here we go. full screen. Right, hold on just a second. It looks like it's paused. Uh. Let me see if I can get it to play and then I'll do the screen share. It may just be an, an, an internet loading moment. No, Meg, we're going to have to be wrapping up because okay. we're already we're All already right. about five ten minutes over. Oh, we are. Oh, I thought yes. I had the whole hour. Oh, it's, Hi, it's forty five minutes. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, well okay. then next time. So there's so actually Lori, because you have MT and Jennifer still has MTSU library okay. access. Yeah, I'll send you a link. Yeah, I'll send you a link to that film because I think folks would really enjoy it. So I am I apologize then. Hope and I see you're waving goodbye. <laughs> if anybody has questions for me, please let me know. And I'm so happy to get to share with you. And I look forward to sharing again. And I know that there's a fabulous fabulous performance happening soon too. So. Thanks. Thanks. That was, <laughs> that was great. Okay, it was good. great. Thank okay, you. Good. All right. Have a great night, everybody. See you. Bye-bye. Yeah.